So we now move to the next characteristics of the sound and that is the pitch. So the next characteristics is pitch of the sound. Pitch, we normally call that, very commonly we keep on saying that, okay, Lata Mangesha speed uh, sings at a very high pitch, okay, or uh, somebody needs to sp uh, speak something at a low pitch so that you are we are able to hear it properly. So, ye low pitch, high pitch, wo kya hai? So that is the uh, frequency of the waveform. So, frequency of the waveform is going to determine the pitch of that particular sound. So, pitch, it is the characteristics of sound that differentiate an acute or shrill sound from a flat sound. Okay. So, normally you can easily identify the sound of a girl and a, and a boy. So, girl, the sound will be much high pitch, that is a shriller, whereas the boy's sound will be flat tone. So, that is why the difference in the pitch is there. The pitch of the girl sound will be higher and that of the boy's will be lower. It depends on the number of vibrations per second. That is, it is dependent on the frequency. The number of vibrations per second is nothing but the frequency. Pitch refers only to the musical sound and each musical note has a definite pitch. So it is pitch refers only to the musical sound and each musical note has a definite pitch. So normally if you have a musical note, so Sare Gama Pada Nisa, so when you say Sare Gama Pada Nisa, so you can say so Nisa, that is a higher pitch, okay. So Sare Gama, so when you are going here, your pitch keeps on increasing. With the increase in the pitch, the tone is keeping on on a higher way. So that's why, so when you say Sare Gama Pada, so when I am going higher, the pitch is going to keep on increasing, whereas Ni, Ni is a high pitch. If the pitch is high, the sound is shrill and if the pitch is low, the sound is flat. In a tape recorder or a TV, bass and treble refers to low and high pitch respectively. At a bass or a woofer on, low pitch grave sound produced by tabla and dholak uh, becomes predominant. While at treble high pitch, that is shrill sounds produced by gungru or flute, are, or ankle bells become pre predominant. So when you are, uh, I don't know how many of you are so much interested in music and how you how you can set the bars in the treble of a particular stereo. So normally you will find that when you want more beats, when you want more do 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 beats, so you will increase the bars. So when the bars is increased, you are going to get some more beats. Whereas when you want the more tingling of the uh, sounds which are there, so that particular thing is the treble part. So the treble it is uh, related to the tingling sound. So the tingling of the, uh, you can say the bells or the ankle bells or the gunguru or a flute. Ye jo hai, even the guitar to a certain level, to that extent is going to be based on the treble. Whereas bass is the one. So treble is much more to the high pitches where the bass will always be at a low pitch. Pitch of the note depends on its frequency. Two notes sound on the same instrument with same amplitude will differ in pitch when the vibrations are at different frequencies. So, yeah, the pitch if we have a waveform, so it will be this way. That there is one wave which is going to be like this. Okay. And there could be another wave over here which will be something like this the amplitude over here is also 2 here also it is 2 but the time period over here is here it is 3 waves in just here it is 1 wave there are 3 waves so you can see that the time period the frequency over here is higher so this one is a high pitch sound so this is high pitch whereas this is low pitch okay so when the frequency is higher it is high pitch when the frequency is lower it is a low pitch so pitch of the note depends on the frequency two notes sound on the same instrument with same amplitude will, dif will differ in pitch when their vibrations are of different frequencies 
Figure 7.9 shows two waves A and B, each of amplitude 2 cm. The wave A is of the time period T is equal to 1 second. The frequency F is equal to 1 upon A is equal to 1 second. Uh, while the B is of time period T is equal to 0 0.5 seconds. The frequency F is 0, 1 upon 0 0.5 is equal to 2 per second per, uh, per second. Thus, the wave A is of low pitch while wave B is of high pitch. So that is exactly here I made it for 3, they have made it for 2. Accordingly here the frequency over here is 3, here the frequency is 1, here the time period is 1, here the time period is 1 upon 3 seconds. Do you know in the displacement time graph if the number of waves is same in the same time interval increases, it means that the time period of the wave has decreased. That is its frequency has increased. So in the displacement time graph, if it is, uh, if the time period over here is going to, if the time period over here is going to increase, that's what they are saying. If the number of waves in the same time period, if the number of waves over here is increasing, right? This this is increasing over here. So if the number of waves for the same time interval increases, it means that the time period of, of the wave has decreased, but the frequency has increased. In the displacement distance graph, if the number of waves of the same distance is increased. It means that the wavelength has decreased, so the frequency has increased. So, in this way, if the time period or if the num distance between the wave increases, the frequency also increases. Now, examples. The frequency of a sound of a crying baby is more than the crying adult. So, the sound of a crying baby is shriller than that of a crying adult. Similarly, the voice of a female is shriller than that of male. So, yeah, very well. You, the baby when it is crying, it is very high pitch. So, that's why it is high pitch one. Whereas the other one, if somebody else is crying, you may not, sometimes not even know that he is crying. If a postcard is rubbed slowly against the teeth of a comb, a grave sound is heard. But if it is rubbed fast, the sound becomes shriller. Okay. In musical instrument, like flute and carinet, the pitch of the sound changes by the changing the length of the vibrating air column. When different holes in it are you close at a time, so you know when in case of a musical instrument like a flute or a trumpet or the when you are going to press the holes, when you are going to close the holes, depending on the closing the holes, you will find that if the air column, if the length of the air column is going to be increasing or decreasing, you are changing the pitch of the sound. So, uh, the pitch of the sound changes by changing the length of the vibrating body uh, with the different holes being closed. The string instrument like a guitar or sitar, violin or uh, piano, the pitch of the sound changes by changing the place of plucking or striking the string. Striking a string or plucking the string. Here I the length is increased. Here I have length is small. I am plucking over here. Okay? The guitar is here. So, when I have plucked here, the length becomes more and I am plucking over. If I am bringing it here, the plucking So, depending upon that, the length is more, the pitch will increase and the pitch will change. Hoga. <coughs> the string instruments are provided with a number of strings of different thickness and under different tension. So, each string produces sound of different pitches. You will see that in a guitar, there will be around 4 or 5 strings. I don't know exactly how many are. But those who play it, they will know it that there will be four or five strings, and each and every string is of different thickness. Okay, there will be one very very fine, then th thicker than then, then thicker than then, then thicker than that. And plus, you are going to adjust with the knobs over there the tightness of each and every uh, string. So that particular thing, where your tightness and the string cut thickness and all, is going to give you different pitch sounds. So let's see how to change the pitch of the string instruments and the uh, wind instruments so let's see one by one in string instruments the instruments such as piano violin guitar have several strings of different thickness under different tensions the reason is that the frequency of the vibration of the string depends on the tension and thickness of the string a note of high pitch can be obtained when the string by the vibrating the string under high tension or vibrating a thinner string. So if the if you want a shriller sound, 
if I want a very shrill sound or high pitched sound, I will use the string which is most tight and most thin. Okay, a thin and tight kind of a string will give me a more shriller sound. But if I want a flatter sound, I'll use a thicker and less tighter strings. The pitch of the sound produced by a string instrument also depends on the place where it is plugged. If the string stretched between its end, plug more closer to the one fixed end, the higher is the pitch of the sound produced. So the pitch will also depend upon where you are plugging it. So that's what they say. If the string stretched between the, its ends is plugged more close to the fixed end. Okay. Agar it is more close to the fixed end, then it is going to give you a more shriller sound, high pitch sound. So, if you have to do it, you will not be able to do it. If you have to do it, you will not be able to do it. Okay, in the guitar, this is a fixed point. This is a fixed point. We are close to that. But then you have to make it the other way here. It is distance increases. So, low pitch. If you have to do it, high pitch. So, that's why you are going to get a high pitch and low pitch sounds in a guitar or a sitar. <clears throat> in wind instruments, in case of flute, clarinet or shenai, clarinet or shenai, a lower note is obtained by closing more number of holes so that the length of the vibrating column increases. So, see it is this way. When you have got, got this particular kind of a flute or something, if I am closing the holes, so air need to travel from here to the end of that particular spout from it, it is going to come out. So, air is going to come out from that end. So, the air column increases. But if I open the holes over here, if I open the holes, the air is able to come out more easily. So that's what they say that in case of flute or shenai or clarinet, a lower note is obtained by closing more number of holes so that the length of the vibrating column increases. Thus the pitch of the sound produced by the flute decreases. So air column increases, pitch decreases. Air column increases, pitch decreases. Agar mene idhar khol diya, to pitch increases. On the other hand, to increase the pitch or to make sound shriller, the holes are open so as to reduce the length of the vibrating air column. So, if the length of the vibrating air column is chota kar diya, to it is going to give you a shriller sound. This can be understood by the following expert activity. Take a picture, <clears throat> keep it below a water tap. If you notice that the water level in the picture rises, the length of the air column decreases, so the frequency of the sound produced increases. The sound becomes shriller and shriller. Thus, by hearing the sound from the distance, one can get an idea that the water level is the pitch is coming up. See, when you are taking, suppose, at night, when you are in the morning, if you are in the morning, if you are in the so you, sometimes you don't even need to switch on the light. You can hear that the glass has become full. Because the moment you open the tap and the glass has started filling up. So initially it is going to give you a, a flat tone. And as the water level keeps on increasing in the glass, the sound becomes more shriller and shriller. And it's because the air column has become less. So air column reduces and it becomes more shriller sound. And then you, when it becomes like you can close the tap and drink the water. So the pitcher also when it is getting filled up, it is going to give you more shriller and shriller sound as the uh, level of the water keeps on increasing. The second activity is take a steel wire of length nearly 0 0.5 meters, stretch the wire between two fixed supports under some tension, plug the wire at the middle it will vibrate in a loop as shown. Now, if you plug the wire at a distance one fourth of the length of the uh, one's end, it will vibrate with two loops as shown. The, the sound now will be shriller than before. So, if you are having a wire up to this this distance, when you have it, it is just going to go this way. So, here it will be movement. Aayega. So, it will be just like if this point is a point, pe agar wire hai, if I plug it over here, the wire is going to just move in this vibration. So, okay, it will be doing this much. But if I pluck it over here, okay, if I pluck it over here, then the vibration is going to be like this. So this will give you more waveform, this is going to give more frequency, that means it is going to be much shriller. So this, when you pluck it here, it will be shriller, when I pluck it here, it will be flatter. 
<clears throat> similarly there is one more activity take a test tube with little water in it and blow air in the tube by placing your mouth lips on the mouth of the test tube you will hear a flat sound <clears throat> now add more water uh, in the test tube as shown in c and d so that the length of the air column of, of the water level decreases each time you blow air and near the sound and near the sound you notice that the sound produced becomes more and more shriller so what you are doing is you are taking a test tube or we are doing to blow into blow it like this aise karke blow kar rahe hain to sound aata hai pehle khali rahega to it is going to give you a flat sound fir uske baad itna pani bhar diya to it will start giving you slightly higher shrill a mean slightly shriller sound itna bhar diya more shriller sound itna bhar diya to bahut shriller sound aayega so depending upon the air column if the air column is decreased more shriller sound is produced similarly is the case in the vibrating instruments so this was first was the instruments which was the uh, string instruments the next was the wind instruments and finally is the membrane instruments so okay the music instruments normally three type ke hote hain one is the one which is the guitar and all which is the wired instruments string instruments the other one is of the flute and all which is the blowing the air voice adapt instruments third one are the membrane like dhol and tablas and all which are going to be uh, membrane instruments in instruments such as dholak tabla drum etc shown in the figure there is a membrane which is stretched by the means of string to produce loud the uh, sound the membrane is made to vibrate by striking or tapping it the pitch of the sound depends on the size and the tension of the membrane more tight and smaller is the membrane higher is the pitch of the sound produced thus to increase the shrill of the sound the instrument of small membrane is taken and its strings are stretched and tightened so uh, membrane membrane may be membrane may be over here the more tighter it is the more shriller will be the sound okay smaller the it is more shriller is the sound so any part you can see when those who play tabla they know very well that high sound is from that smaller one and the bigger one will give you a baser bass kind of thing it will flatter note where this will give you ting tap 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 give you wo anyway that is i don't know or exactly this called but it is the smaller ones will give you a shriller sound and the bigger one will give you a flatter sound we are having something which is called as a monotone which is done with the help of the uh, tuning fork so when it has got only one single kind of a music in it or one single kind of a sound in it it is called as a monotone a sound of single frequency is called as monotone so when any sound is produced of a single frequency okay if the sound produced is always of the same frequency single frequency it is called as a monotone A tuning fork is the only source of sound which produces sound of a single frequency. A tuning fork is shown in the figure. It is a U-shaped metallic piece with a stem in the middle. Its arms and are known as prongs. The tuning fork is set into vibration when any one of its prong is struck with the rubber pad. So when you take the rubber string and go oh, tuning fork liya or rubber pad ko mara, the prongs are going to come into vibration and the vibration is going to produce a sound. and this vibration will be a standard vibration which is a set vibration and that's why it is a single tone vibration because it is only of a one tone the tuning fork is set in vibration when any one of its prongs is struck with a rubber pad Gen generally tuning fork are made of frequency which correspond to the musical notes different tuning forks may have different frequencies so the tuning fork of different different shapes and sizes all the shapes shapes are the same but the sizes are different a small one big one bigger or har ek ka khud ka ek frequency hota hai there it is written on that it is printed on that thing that ki ye kitne frequency ka hai so that will be uh, based on the frequency when struck with the rubber pad a tuning fork vibrates with its own frequency the frequency produced by the tuning fork is marked on it generally the tuning fork are available of the frequencies 256 hertz 288 hertz 320 hertz or per second per second in hertz is one of the same 320 hertz as per s to minus 1 384 s to minus 1 or per second 480 per second or 512 per second the waveform of the sound of a tuning fork is shown over here so it will be always a waveform which will be a monotone like this so always the frequency a waveform will be of this particular kind so this was about the tuning fork 
and this was about the pitch of the uh, sound of the pitch of the sound so we saw over here the loudness was dependent on the amplitude whereas the pitch is dependent on the frequency so that is what we in the start of the chapter we understood that the characteristics were dependent on the loudness was and were dependent on the amplitude and frequency this is how the amplitude and frequency are going to give the characteristics of the sound so the characteristic sound of loudness is got by the amplitude of the loud of the wave and the frequency of the wave gives you the pitch of that particular sound the next what we have is the kind of the characteristic which is called as the quality or timbre i think i'll take it in the next video so that uh, we got i'll take it in this next video okay there is quite a lot of time available so it's more than 10 minutes by so we can continue in this one uh, and then uh, okay i'll take it in the next video only so that it's easier